Hey everybody, welcome back to Adventures with Peps. It's a Saturday, so we are looking at a white dwarf. And look at that, October 82. It was 95p. What a great age to be alive. I appreciate the 95p was actually worth more back then. But damn, I'd happily take a white dwarf for 95p these days. So inside it just says a Warhammer special competition and pullout plus the life fantastic Judge Dread Traveler and much more. Open up straight away we get a couple of great games I had back in the day. I had Warlock of Firetop Mountain. That was a great little board game. Played that a lot. Talisman. I love Talisman. Also that's one of the games that I can get my wife into as well. That is excellent. Kings and Things was very interesting. You explored lands, you gained creatures, and then you controlled the land and you could attack other people with said creatures. It was a very interesting game. I enjoyed that one as well. Sorcerer, never really got into that one. That was a book set, I believe, similar to Fight and Fantasy, I believe. And then the Monster Pain set, the classic, with the little golden demon. They should bring him back. And it talks about a few things that we just mentioned. Oh, it's looking a little dark. Let's see if we can brighten oh, over brighten it. I don't want to... going to blind us out with this light, I think. Hang on. Let's uh, go one more, I think. There we go. Let's go with that. We got Dungeoneer's Survival Guide for D&D. Kings and Things, which I just discussed, Orc Busters, and the Vanishing Conjurer, the Statue of the Sorcerer. Oh, that wasn't what I thought it was. It's the Duke Call of Cthulhu. Interesting. What a time. Uh, then it goes a bit more open box here with Swords of Deceit, a role-playing adventure for advanced Dungeons and Dragons. Then it looks like my light is playing up on me today. Let's go with that. Uh, we then have the fantasy role-playing game, Warhammer. I assume this was when it first came out. I have no idea what this is. Simple as we told you, the final. Okay, you can win 50 com uh, copies. And there was 500 runner-up prizes. Look at that, the old address. Uh, Panoranoia. Nice little sci-fi role-playing game that I believe still exists. I've never played it. Don't know much about it. I know I have some figures that I use in Judge Dredd from it. We then have a little book review, which I really love seeing book reviews in The White Dwarf. Then we get some Dungeons and Dragons goodies. What is this? The ships. Oh, wow. Even kind of shows you how to build a ship over here. So this was a game that lets you play little boat battles. This is so cool. I haven't opened this up in a long while. And I regret that I don't look through these more often. Doing this has really shown me that I need to do this more often. Look at that. I guess you could print it off maybe. Build your own ships. Pieces necessary to construct this one ship. That's so cool. There's rules for dinghies, rowboats, barges, ships, hulks. Talks about the crew. Random damage table, fire damage, grappling hooks. This seems like a precursor of uh, Man of War. It's so cool. It's so cool. Um, we then get some adverts. Nothing too crazy there. Games Day 86. Look at that. How to get there. The venue is the Royal Horticultural Society Hall in London. Games Day used to be held in London. Oh, just love looking at this. I could spend hours just staring at pages and looking at the artwork. It's signed with the modern White Dwarfs. It just doesn't have this. Sure, it may be nostalgia working for me, but it just seems so cool. So cool. Uh, this looks like Terry Pratchett. The Light Fantastic is the first sequel to The Color of Magic, 
a rather strange and very funny fantasy adventure. If you have not read the first book, why not? Terry Pratchett has done to fantasy and role-playing what Douglas Adams has done to sci-fi. And not before time. Meanwhile, back at the plot of the book, Rincewind, Two Flower and Luggage were last seen falling into a bronze spaceship. Oh, sorry, misread that completely. Last seen falling off the edge of the Discworld in a spacesuit without a helmet, in a bronze spaceship, and on its own. Things have changed. Now read on. What? It, what? Wow. This is part of the book by the looks of it. And then you could win the books. That is so surprising to see something like that i did not realize that was in there at all let me get a couple more adverts the board look at that that was what the board looked like so so cool it's so colorful love the artwork we then get a whole page a, stro uh, a stroll across the disc world advanced dungeon dragons adventures on the back of a giant turtle how to play Discworld. Wow. Talks about characters, wizards, magic, spells, spell books. Discworld creatures, Taurus class. That's crazy that that's in there. I think uh, there is a Discworld RPG now that exists. I guess this was the precursor of it all. And we have a Mercy miss Mission which I assume is for Traveller. Yep, says that. Two pages, and then it goes into Warhammer Fantasy. Obviously, a little story to get you in the mood. This was a pull-out by the looks of it. Uh, it talks about the background of the game, how we make characters, how they progress in the career, the game, the combat system, the m magic, what you actually get in the book the future holds for the game that's well oh, i'm blown away by this and then we're back to the uh, traveler mission we've got a little map there got some more rules traveler is a game worth trying out if you've never played one but they're very uh it's a number crunching kind of role play and we got fud the barbarian comic page or frud the barbarian Mutant radioactive zombie bikers from hell. That is a mouthful. It's beautiful artwork though. I really enjoy it. This is what inspired me as a kid looking through these white dwarfs, especially these pages. I could stay, I would literally spend an afternoon just staring at this picture. Imagine if I could paint it. So this is all John Blanche by the looks of it. There's this classic Minotaur with the Mona Lisa. Iconic Skaven. His, uh, his warrior Amazon lady. A couple of conversions. That's a Judge Dredd figure. That's, uh, actually, I got him here waiting to be painted up. A couple of other models. They look like the City Dev guys. Need to just pause for a minute. Then we got the Angel Gang. John Blanche is just, I don't understand how his mind works. He is a pure treasure, <laughs> absolute treasure in my mind. Then the lovely pages of figures. Got Judge Def, Dread, Anderson, Elliot, Merritt, Dread, Anderson and Hershey, Lord of the Rings, a couple of dwarfs, a black rider, wood elves, that became normal elves <laughs> in Warhammer after a while. Uh, Doctor Who got the unit unit. Uh, Daleks K9. The Sea Devils. I love the Sea Devils. I have these these two, Roma and Turlo, if that's how you pronounce his name. I have them in my collection. I'm using them. They're going to be used in Judge Dredd. But uh, got Star Trek miniature. Early early Bretonians for Warhammer and Chaos Fugs and a couple of Ogres 195 for a big ass piece of lead can't believe it Ugh. 
If I could go back in time, I would tell my teenager self to put my figures in a box, pack them up nicely, and save them for me as an adult. <laughs> he was a fool to sell them and give them away. Right, we then have a ton of Bretonians. Cool looking. You can see where the ideas were all coming from back then. What's this? Looks like a, a Gen Con. Man on the spot reported exactly at Gen Con. Set the world alight. There was so it talks about Gen Con and what was being shown off there. Uh, use and abuse maps in a role playing game. That's a little fun. When to make a map, when not to make a map. And here we go. Finally, finally, we hit the Judge Dread. Informers in the Judge Dread role playing game. Got this, these lines make it very hard to read. So it talks a little bit of explaining about who the narcs are. There's the classic uh, Max Normal, who is Judge Dredd's narc. This looks like maybe, I've not seen this picture in an actual comic. If you recognize which comic it's from or which era. It's meant to be the 80s because that's um, Bob. I won't say his full name. And that's Max Normal, which were around in the 90s, but I don't recognize that picture. Uh, then it just talks about an example of how narcs might work in an actual game. Oh, is that it? And it's just like, informers really do add something to the Judge game. Wow, that was quick. We just shot through the narc page real quick. A couple of adverts who have owned this before me highlight some stuff. Should we see what they liked? We'll swap Advanced Dungeons and Dragons for Rangers of the North. Phone Martin. Swap Dungeons and Dragons modules plus material. Uh, wandering gamers interested in starting a new RPG group. So whoever owned this was getting into Dungeons and Dragons. That's funny to read. A couple more adverts. We get some Golden Age Star Trek. Look at that. They don't make them like that anymore. And then you get the, oh, I had these books as a child. You could play it alone or you could play it against someone. And it was like him and him in a maze facing each other. And you had to try and kill each other off. Then the classic plastic skeleton horde. And then Marvel superheroes is advertised on the back. I have this. It's hidden in my cupboard. One day we'll do the unboxing. I have to hide it from my son currently because he is in a massive superhero kick. He loves grabbing that box and looking at all the cardboard inside. And it is, I'm scared that the poor box will not survive him. So I've got to wait for him to be a bit older before I let him go digging through that. But anyway, hope you enjoyed. Quick, dirty video and I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.